Hello, this is Jack, and I'm going to show you very quickly how to use the data lookup function for chemicals in Excel. So here I have a list of a few things that I might be interested in, and I'm going to highlight them. And the chemical function is going to be under the data menu, and you're looking for that Erlenmeyer flask under data types. It converts these all to chemical stem. If it feels like it might rename some of your chemicals, and then uh, we can decide what do we want to look up. First thing I will do is the CAS number. That's going to be under C. And it's going to punch that up as CAS and then the number. If I want, I can remove the CAS using the replace function. And so I have programmed it here to re replace the first three characters with nothing. And then that removes the CAS. Other things we might be interested for these solvents are boiling point, density, a molar mass maybe, and flash point. So I can look all of those up, just highlight the whole thing, get the data, and it's going to be in alphabetical order. Density, molar mass, that's M, MM, M. Come on, Jack. Molar mass, there it is. Flash point under F, boom. So that gets us all of our data super fast. And let's say we want to add the formula, for example. It can do a little text string that tells us what the formula is. There we go. And if you are interested in sorting these or recategorizing them, you can just use the regular data sort function in Excel. All right, now down here I have a list of things that can either be an element or a compound. And so Excel is going to ask me if it has a question. What do you want? So in this case, I'm going to pick the element for all of these, as in just a single atom, and it's going to then give a different symbol with the little atomic symbol next to it because it's treated as a single atom. So there will be a different list of things that we can look up. For example, the uh, atomic mass instead of the molar mass, and then the atomic symbol instead of the chemical formula. There. Now, if we're interested in these atomic elements, we can look up things such as electron affinity or electronegativity or other periodic properties. And boom, there you go. All right, now if I'm interested in them as a chemical compound, I can copy those, paste them below, and I can hit that Erlenmeyer flask again. It'll re-ask me, now do you want the compound? And so I'll hit yes. I want the compound for all of these. Then it gives me a whole different list of data. Now it's going to be just um, the formula mass, and I'll put mass first here, molar mass, and then chemical formula. So notice if I pick molar mass, it's going to be a multiple of the atomic mass. I just have to find it again. There we go. So fluorine, for example, is 38 instead of 19, and the formula there is F2. I can look up other random features. Look at this humongous list of things we can do. And I'll choose, say, odor here. And if it doesn't have an odor, you know, that it can look up, it's going to give us that pound field, meaning it can't find the data. Now let's try some weak acids here, and I can look up the Ka and the pKa. So acetic acid, let's say benzoic acid, uh, hydrofluoric acid, but I'm feeling lazy. I'm just going to type HF and uh, see what it does with that. And then, oh, let's try acetic acid, CH3COOH, and see what happens. So 
highlight those, convert them to chemical, and look at figured it out and renamed them all. Now we just have to find where Ka is. There it is. Boom. And we can also look up pKa if we're interested in making a buffer or doing some calculations. There's pKa. All right. So that's a real quick look at how to look up chemical data using the latest version of Excel. Hope you found that really cool. And happy Friday and have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye.